you got enough smooth brome grass there, it'll respond to some kind of rejuvenation, even a fertilizer application. But if it's, like I said, if it's switched to weedy species or invasive species, then yeah, that's the point. You look at those and you say, okay, we, we've got less than 10% grass. You're probably looking at a termination and a reseed. The Beef Research School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. That's always a good question. Uh, producers, I think, need to examine the species in their pasture. If you've got a pasture that uh, you know was seeded a number of years ago, and you know, say more than five years ago, you'll see that the composition of the plant species are often quite different than what you saw in the first year right after seeding. Uh, legumes are obviously the first thing that, that we look for and because they're high in palatability and feed quality and usually in production. So if you've seeded an alfalfa grass mixture and you notice that you know the, the number of alfalfa plants has gone below one plant per square foot, you're probably looking at a situation where that pasture product production is going to decline, quality is going to decline, and so you're going to look at the idea of either sod seeding a, a legume back in or doing some kind of rejuvenation technique to increase production. Putting a, an alfalfa in with a sod seeding technique is often the, the best way to rejuvenate a, a, an old pasture where the legume has gone out and it's, it's gone to a grass. If you've got a predominantly uh, low producing species like a low growing sod forming grass, uh, often we see Canada bluegrass uh, coming into some of our parkland pastures in particular and while it's a very productive species it's very low to the ground so we don't get the yield in terms of um, being able to harvest it. So if you get a, a situation where you've got species like that or weedy species in the pasture, then obviously you, you might want to look at a complete termination and then a reseed. So it kind of depends on what uh, situation the producer's in with the species that are present in that old pasture. And then from there they can make a decision about which way to go. Well, soil testing is, is always helpful to determine what you've got in your soil for nutrients and what's deficient. But I've been around long enough to know that if we soil test an old grass pasture, generally we'll find nitrogen's deficient. And that's why the legume's so important, because it gives you the nitrogen fixation from you know, the root nodules. So you get biological fixation of atmospheric nitrogen that supplies not only the legume, but also the grasses. So yeah, soil testing is helpful, but generally it, it's really important to look at that for things like PK and S and maybe some micronutrients rather than nitrogen. So I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't say soil testing is the key decision maker. It's the species present. And if you, if you do a, just a comparison of the different species, you do some species identification, you can determine from the species that are present what's the productive potential. Every province has their rec forage crop recommendations for uh, different seeding mixtures. The thing to look at is what soil zone are you in. So if you're in the brown soil zone, you're going to be seeding at a much lower rate, looking for a lower plant density per square foot compared to the parkland or irrigation. Irrigation has the highest seeding rates and so you kind of go down that moisture gradient in seeding rates. Get your provincial forage guide and check out the seeding rates. You, it is possible based on you know knowing the, the seed weight of a species you're interested in. Uh, you can calculate your own custom seeding rate but that's pretty complicated. You might want to get a you know an agrologist to help you to do that. Always a challenging question. The, the uh, standard rule of thumb for seeding forages is early spring. Um, lots of producers find that difficult to do because of, you know, busy time of the year with calving and seeding annual crops. 
The second best time of the year that I found is seeding late fall. We call it dormant seeding. You're basically waiting until the soil temperature drops below five degrees Celsius in, in the fall. Uh, one producer told me, I wait till the snow is flying and then I seed my forages in November. And, and it's really a good indicator that, that you know, if the snow is hitting the ground and it's not melting, the soil temperature is cool enough, those seeds won't germinate till the next spring. So dormant seeding in the fall is a good second one. Uh, really the, the worst time to seed a lot of our cool season forage is, is in the middle of summer because water stress on the seedling is a big issue. The seedling roots are very small. They explore a small volume of soil compared to mature plant roots. And so, you know, if you seed a seedling in end of June, early July, and then the hot weather typically hits us in July and August, those seedlings can get water stressed. So, um, yeah. Certainly my experience is early spring or late fall. Well, the problem with continuous grazing is that the, the, basically your animals are allowed to go back and graze any plant they want and often they go back and they re-graze the same plants they've grazed before. That reduces vigor, it reduces the opportunity for the plant, or eliminates the opportunity for the plant to reallocate some growth down below ground to reestablish roots or new growing points at the base of the plant. And so we've seen very clearly that the product, productive potential of pastures is improved under rotational grazing where plants are given the opportunity to recover from the grazing event and re-initialize re roots and new shoots and then have some opportunity for growth. You know, often people say, well, my pasture's overgrazed, so I'll reduce the stocking rate. Well, one of the things you can, can do, instead of reducing the stocking rate, is split your pastures and do some kind of a rotational system that will give those plants an opportunity to rest and recover. And that growth period during that rest and recovery period just allows the, the higher yielding and more nutritious plants to come back and compete with all the weedy invaders. So, yeah, we know that Rotational grazing is a tool that producers can use, but like many tools that, and technologies that we want to bring into our beef production systems, it requires some management.